Often, people with asthma say they're not satisfied with the consultation they've had with a doctor or with another healthcare professional for an asthma checkup or an asthma review. One of the problems is that you may not always see the same doctor, nurse or pharmacist who knows you and who knows about your asthma. Another problem is that healthcare professionals you see may not be fully aware of the latest evidence on the treatment of asthma. So it's important to understand that a consultation is a two-way process and it's in your own interests to know as much as possible about asthma and it's very helpful for the person that you're consulting to be able to understand how your asthma affects your life. So in this way, your explanation of what your asthma does to you can help your doctor or trained asthma nurse or pharmacist or whoever you're seeing to find the best way to treat you. So if you want to get the most benefit from an asthma review, you do need to be aware of what you should expect from your asthma consultation by knowing as much as possible about the disease and most importantly, you need to provide some details about your own asthma and how it affects your life um, when you attend for these consultations. I have provided detailed information on asthma in the Asthma Spotlight podcasts and in this episode I'm discussing how you can prepare for your consultation with your healthcare provider. So what I'm talking about is how you can get the most benefit from a routine consultation about your asthma. So I'm not talking about checkups during and after attacks. So in this podcast, I'm focusing on a routine review. I have touched on this topic in previous podcasts. I'll do more in a future podcast. But I would for now suggest that you listen to the podcast episodes 26 and 28, where a specialist asthma pharmacist and a specialist asthma nurse explain their roles and their, how they can help when they see someone with asthma. Now, as I've said many times in previous episodes, your own asthma will be very different to other people's experience. And so your treatment by your doctor may not be the same as for others. Your treatment and your personal asthma self-management plan needs to be tailored or adapted to suit your own asthma and how your asthma affects your life. So in order to get the most from a consultation, you need to know your asthma and know how it affects you. And it may be best if you keep some notes to take with you for your consultation. So the information about your asthma that could be helpful for your healthcare professional includes a number of things. It includes what happens when your asthma goes out of control, when does it happen, Are there any patterns that you recognize or that you notice when your asthma goes out of control? And what do you do when these things happen and how does that help? So let's start with what happens when your asthma goes out of control. How does your asthma affect you? Do you have attacks? Do you end up having symptoms like coughing, wheezing or difficulty in breathing? And how do they affect you? For example, Do you wake up because of these symptoms, or do they interfere with physical activity, or do they stop you from doing your work? If your child has asthma, does their asthma affect their ability to go to school? So do they miss a lot of schooling? Now while it's important to say if you're getting symptoms, the most important bit of information is about asthma flare-ups or asthma attacks. Your doctor may refer to these as exacerbations. Now, a bit of background to this. I've been expert witness in a number of inquests where children have sadly died from their asthma. And in two of these very sad cases, the children had had more than 45 attacks of asthma in their short lives without ever being seen by an asthma specialist. In another child who died from asthma, There were 11 missed opportunities during his last year of life for him to be referred to a specialist. Now these asthma deaths, like most asthma deaths, 
um, which result from asthma attacks, could probably have been prevented. So the most important thing to know is if your asthma is well controlled. You should not have asthma flare-ups or attacks if your asthma is well controlled. So if you're having attacks, even if these were some months before your asthma checkup or review, you do need to tell the person doing your review that you've had an attack. And in the United Kingdom, this might be a doctor, a nurse, or a pharmacist, or even someone else. If you are having asthma attacks, that's a signal that something serious is going wrong, and your asthma treatment needs to be checked by a doctor or by someone who's trained in asthma care. So at the start of your asthma review, if you have had any flare-ups or attacks, you should say so. If you have been admitted to hospital or treated at the emergency department or by your doctor for more than one asthma attack in the last year, you should tell the person doing your review. Because if the cause of these attacks can't be fixed, then you probably need to be seen by an asthma specialist. What's important to understand is that even if you don't have any symptoms when you see the healthcare professional, if you've had an attack in the last year, your asthma is poorly controlled and action needs to be taken. So if you're having flare-ups or attacks, your asthma is not controlled. Another way to tell if your asthma is not controlled is if you're getting symptoms, like coughing, wheezing, which is a whistling noise that comes from your chest, or if you're getting problems with breathing. Next, if you're getting symptoms from your asthma, when do you get them? And are there any patterns? I mean, do they happen at similar times? One pattern may be related to the seasons of the year. So, for example, if your symptoms come on at particular times of the year, you may be allergic, say, to pollens. If the symptoms are in the early spring, when the trees are blossoming, you may be allergic to tree pollen. Alternatively, if they come on in the summer, you may be allergic to grass pollen. In the autumn or the fall, you may be allergic to fungal growths or fungi, moulds which grow at that time of year. And if your symptoms occur all year round, you may be allergic to something called the house dust mite, which lives in your home. If your child's asthma gets worse after returning from summer holidays or vacation, it may be caused to, um, by exposure to viruses that other children have shared with your child. Now, other patterns where your symptoms occur include things that you do and that are associated with your bodily function. For example, some women find that their asthma gets worse during menstruation and during pregnancy. So providing all this information for your healthcare provider is one way of helping them to decide how best to advise you on managing your asthma. So let's talk about some examples where asthma symptoms flare up with exposure to day-to-day -day things that you do. Do your symptoms come on when you do any exercise? What may happen is that you start coughing or wheezing or get short of breath soon after starting exercise, or it might happen later, during or after exercise. Laughter is another time that you or your child's asthma may cause symptoms. Does your asthma get worse when you go out for a walk in the countryside, when you're exposed to various pollens? Exposure to smoke or fumes is another pattern that could happen. So your symptoms may get worse when you're at a barbecue or at a fireworks display, or if you smoke or if you're in a room where someone else is smoking. So why am I telling you about all these patterns? The reason is that your doctor or nurse may not ask you specific questions. They may not ask you what your asthma is like and how it affects you. From your own experience, you'll know that sometimes consultations with your doctor or healthcare provider are very short. So if you notice that these patterns are affecting your own asthma and your life, in other words, that you've noticed when your asthma symptoms get worse, you should really share this information with a doctor or nurse before leaving. And firstly, 
If you're getting symptoms, it means that your asthma is not well controlled. And secondly, your treatment could be changed so that your asthma can be controlled and so you don't end up having these symptoms and they don't go on to causing an attack. I don't mean only that your medication may be changed. It may be that you're not taking your medication as prescribed or that you're not using your inhaler correctly. And so you could be shown, for example, how to use the inhaler correctly or advised on the importance of taking your medication as prescribed. Or it may mean that you need to see a specialist because your asthma is not well controlled despite doing all the things that you've been advised to do. So the point I'm making is that this information can help your healthcare professional to make you feel better and to help you prevent attacks. Now there are two other patterns of asthma symptoms that you should notice. One is if you're getting asthma symptoms at work and the other is whether your symptoms come on after or during eating. Asthma that flares up due to exposure to substances at work is called occupational asthma or work exposure asthma. This kind of asthma can start in adulthood when you start working or it could be where asthma that you had in childhood gets aggravated by things you're exposed to at work. The clue that you may have occupational asthma is that your symptoms would be worse when you're at work and then they improve and you get better when you're away from work. Now, if this is happening to you, tell your doctor because you may benefit from a referral to an occupational health specialist. The other thing to know is that occupational rhinitis, that's um, occupational substances that affect your nose, like runny nose, itchy nose or sneezing, can be caused by exposure to some substances at work. This often comes on before asthma symptoms become evident, sometimes up to a year before asthma becomes evident. So if this is happening to you, you should tell your doctor because a specialist might help you to prevent this from going on to become full-blown occupational asthma. In addition, allergy to food can cause life-threatening attacks called anaphylaxis attacks. Those are sudden, severe reactions to food that need immediate treatment, usually with an adrenaline injection or sometimes with an antihistamine tablet. However, food allergy can also cause asthma to flare up and this is a particularly dangerous kind of asthma. So if you notice that your usual asthma symptoms come on or that they get worse when you eat, or if you notice that you get itching or irritation in your mouth or throat when you're eating, you should tell your doctor because this may need investigation by a specialist. It doesn't always mean that you're allergic to those foods. There are other conditions which can cause itching when you eat, itching in your throat when you eat, but a specialist will be able to sort that out. So how does all this information help you? In my view, This sort of information concerning patterns that you notice about how and when your asthma symptoms flare up can be very helpful for your doctor or trained asthma nurse when you have your review or checkup. So if you do notice a pattern regarding your symptoms, write these observations down. So write down what you were doing before or during the flare-up of the symptoms, even sometimes up to a day before the symptoms flared up. And take this pattern, this list of patterns with you when you have your review and share it with your doctor. Better still, if you've noticed a pattern where your symptoms flare up, arrange an appointment for a consultation as soon as possible to explain this to your doctor. So in summary, in this episode, I've tried to help you to get the most benefit from a consultation with your healthcare provider by providing them with useful information which they may not specifically ask for. And this will help them to diagnose how your asthma affects you and what needs to be changed regarding your treatment or your asthma management. And so in summary, these are, firstly, 
Asthma symptoms often come on suddenly without warning, and that's one of the reasons why you should have an asthma self-management plan agreed with your doctor. And it's also one of the reasons that you should know what sort of patterns spark off your asthma, because you can anticipate that and take extra medication before exposure. These symptoms are often brought on by particular triggers or exposure to substances, and there might be a pattern for these episodes. So when your asthma flares up, think about this carefully. Is this flare-up similar to past flare-ups that you've had? Is it at the same time of the year, like spring or summer? Is it after certain activities, like exercise or work or starting school after a summer vacation? Or is it related to changes in your body, like menstruation? Make a note of the patterns that you notice and arrange to see your doctor or asthma trained nurse as soon as possible. I hope this has been helpful, and if so, please follow the podcast and share it with others, and let me have any feedback via my email. That's asthmaspotlight at gmail.com.